Okay, you should now have some coloured sweets, I think I've got to call them, coming around to you now. Um, now, in the spirit of Ted, these sweets have been specially engineered to ensure that if you eat a blue one, it means you'll never make another mistake or fail ever again. It's a choice, you don't have to have one, but if you eat a blue one, you'll never make another mistake or fail ever again. So, how do we make Guernsey the greatest place to live on Earth? We'll all have different ideas, opinions, views as to what that might look like. However, there's one fundamental thing that I'm sure we'd all agree on, and that is, for that vision to be realised, we need to be able to change and grow. And there's a lovely quote by Jim Rohn, who said, Your life does not get better by chance. It gets better by change. So how do we ensure this positive change? How about we focus on being our very best, both individually and collectively? John Wooden, that inspirational basketball coach, put it like this. Success is peace of mind in knowing you did your best to become the best you are capable of becoming. Now, this will mean uh, setting goals which are self-referenced, rather than uh, having that temptation of comparing ourselves and judging ourselves to other people. And for me, it was a lack of self-reference goals that has caused some of the most able and highly skilled cricketers that I've played with to underachieve. They, many of them would find themselves content being the best in the county, the best in the island, the best in the team, and consequently didn't push themselves or find new ways in which they could improve. As a result, many of them were caught up, overtaken, became disappointed and were no longer involved in the game. So in 2009, when I came across the work of Professor Carol Dweck and her book Mindset, it gave me, at the time I felt, a real understanding, but most importantly, a way of helping some highly skilled but plateauing and underachieving cricketers move forwards. So, mindset, what is it? Well, mindset is defined as a set of beliefs or a way of thinking that determines one's behaviour, outlook and mental attitude. And the thing to stress here is that it's about beliefs. And beliefs can be rational or irrational and not necessarily based on any truth. And Professor Dweck poses the question, what do you believe about our abilities? Can they change? She identifies two mindsets, a fixed mindset and a growth mindset. In a fixed mindset, you believe that your intelligence and abilities are carved in stone and that where you are now would predict where you're likely to be in the future. In a growth mindset, you would believe that your intelligence, your abilities can change and grow and it would be impossible to predict yours or somebody else's potential. And the research on this is absolutely fascinating. Dr. Dweck and one of her colleagues conducted an experiment with over 400 uh, children, 11-year-olds. And they got them to complete some sets of puzzles. And then they praised them in one of two ways. To half of them, they said, well done, you must have really worked hard. And to the other half, they said, well done, you must be smart at this. They then gave them a choice, and they said, would you like to complete some harder puzzles, or would you like to do some which are the same level of difficulty that you've just been doing? Have a think, and think about which children do you think chose the harder puzzles, those praised for their effort, or those praised for their intelligence and ability? Let's do a show of hands. Right, hands up if you think it was those praised for effort. Okay, and hands up if you think it was those praised for their ability. Right, kind of half and half, okay. It was actually those praised for effort. 90% of those praised for trying chose the harder task, whereas only 34% of those praised for their intelligence chose to do the harder puzzles. And when we think about it, it makes sense. Because if you're praised for a trait or an innate ability or a fixed quality, you wouldn't put yourself in a situation where your belief about that quality might be challenged. Because it would threaten your sense of self-esteem, really, if you failed. And so... In effect, some of these children have been put into a growth mindset and some into a fixed mindset with just that one single line of different praise. So what they then asked them to do was to complete the harder challenges. So all the, all the children had to have a go at those tougher puzzles. And what they found was looking at their behaviours, they behaved very differently. Those given that growth mindset praise enjoyed the task far more. They persisted and found different ways of trying to work out the answer. 
and their performance actually increased, and they outperformed those who'd been praised for their intelligence. So those ones, praised for their ability, they disengaged. They gave up and they lost confidence when those things became hard. And actually, their performance declined over the course of the experiment. And this is fascinating, because they then asked them to report their scores. And they found that 10% of children, given that process-based praise, lied about their scores. But 40% of those children, put in that fixed mindset, lied about their performance, because they had no other way of coping with their failure other than by lying about how well they'd done. This is a clip of a parent who had been to some of our presentations and read the book, and she was um, reflecting on the sort of praise that she'd given her children, who are now teenagers. Yeah. <laughs> I said, I've been apologising to my children, and my mind has been completely changed and altered since reading the works of um, Dr. Carol Dweck. I've discovered that I've actually had given uh, my children a fixed mindset and um, the reason for this is me thinking that I was doing something right. So in her attempt to build her children's self-esteem, she had lavished them with fixed mindset praise and she was seeing the resulting behaviours of that, in particular in their teenage years. But these mindsets aren't just relevant to children and to parents. They're important for us all across all aspects of our lives, so professionally and personally. Now, had I been told that I was awful at public speaking or that nobody in my family had ever been any good at it, that could have put me in a fixed mindset. However, I have been told, actually, that I'm gifted and natural, born to be on the stage, which has also put me in a fixed mindset. So, I am going to go and stand by this never-to-change piece of Guernsey granite. I, on the other hand, have a true story. <laughs> 14 years ago, when I was doing my educational psychology training, I remember the physical reaction I had when I was told I had to do a presentation. My heart was pounding, I felt sick, my palms were all clammy, and I had this sort of overwhelming sense of dread, and I avoided doing it for years. Until four years ago, when in my annual appraisal, I made a confession to my boss. And I said, Karen, I hate doing training to schools. I hate delivering presentations, and I've been avoiding it for years. And she said, oh, we're going to have to do something about that. And it wasn't really the response I'd been hoping for. Because not believing that I could do anything, I, I kind of said, well, how? And she, because she did believe that I could overcome this, supported me and gave me some advice and said, Rachel, you're just going to have to get on and do it. So I was kind of supported to then behave with a growth mindset, and here I am doing a TED Talk. So what did the behaviours that come out of the two mindsets look like? Well, given a challenge, for me in a fixed mindset, I'm likely to avoid it, because if I fail, it's going to impact on my sense of self-worth. Well, for me, challenges will take me outside of my comfort zone and actually enable me to take a bit of a risk to see if I can improve. I know that actually I'm not going to learn anything if I always do things that I know I'm good at, so I'll choose to challenge myself. And failure, for me, failure is final and confirms that I am a failure and leads to feelings of anger, despair and ultimately withdrawal. For me, failure is neither good nor bad, but it's an opportunity to learn. So I'll look at my mistakes, see where things didn't go quite right and use them to start again, but this time more wisely. And effort, I don't see the point in effort. I value effortless performance. I don't believe in trying hard because I expect everything should be easy. For me, effort actually is the path to mastery and to competence. Because I believe that I can get better, that underpins the value of effort and hard work. I also understand about deliberate practice and how that would change the structure of my brain. Criticism. I get defensive because actually I can't change, so any criticism of me becomes a direct uh, bit of feedback about me which I can't change. So I'm likely to get defensive and blame other people. So for me, criticism and feedback is actually something that I'll look to use to improve because I believe, again, that I can change. So I'll actively go out and ask for feedback and see how I can get better. The success of others. For me, I I'm about comparing myself to others. So the success of others is a, is a real threat. I'm likely to undermine or try and sabotage others' performance. Okay, so I'd look for inspiration in the success of other people because I understand that they've been on a journey 
in order to achieve their goals and to get where they've got to. I'll look at them and think, well, how did they do that? Is there something I can learn in order to help me reach my goals? And as a result, I'm likely to plateau early, underachieve and hold a deterministic view of the world. And when things get difficult, I'm likely to look very helpless. And for me, actually, I'm going to reach ever higher levels of achievement in order to become my best at whatever it is that I choose to pursue. And because I believe I can change, I'm going to have a greater sense of free will because my abilities and those of the others around me can change and grow. Okay. So our vision is for a growth-minded Guernsey, uh, a place where all people and others believe that they can change, grow, and develop. And this underpins innovation, creativity, performance, and learning. Since September 2013, we've been engaged in the Mindset in Schools project on a day a week. We've presented so far to teachers, parents, students, and politicians, and in sport, coaches, sportsmen, sportwomen, uh, also policymakers and states employees. And where people haven't been able to get to us, we've gone to them. This is Mindset in the Pub. We've also now got requests coming in from health and social services, the prison, businesses, and a whole range of different parts of the community, which for us confirms the value of Mindset and how it can impact on not just education and sport, but a whole raft of areas of our uh, community. And so through the Education Department and the Guernsey Sports Commission enabling us to do this, um, we've been able to help people in our workshops to see what their beliefs are and to see where they may, may be barriers to them actually achieving their best. People start to understand where they hold growth mindsets and where they hold fixed mindsets. And we found that even with a particular domain, say leadership or management, people's individual beliefs, even within those things, can be different. So they might, say, hold a growth mindset about communication skills and a fixed mindset about listening skills. So what we do is help people to understand what the mindsets are and to get across that they can change and teach them about how they can actually foster a growth mindset in themselves and in other people. So we teach them a bit about the brain, how it's malleable, and how it can change when challenged and with practice. We think about hearing the fixed mindset voices. So when you hear yourself say something that you think, oh, that might be quite fixed, consider responding with a growth mindset alternative. <laughs> how people can um, think about feedback. So whether they give it, hopefully, more in a process base rather than focusing on the outcomes. And this is the important bit that I've forgotten. How could I? It's a three-letter word, and it's yet. So what it actually means is that if you hear yourself or someone else say, I can't do something, you add that word yet, and that's key. What we've done now is we're starting to see the impact of this across the island. This is a display which is in the foyer of one of our primary schools, which shows how they've been learning about um, the mindset and the brain. And each one of those little yellow lightning bolts is actually a statement from one of the children. So on one of them, for example, it's got, I don't understand fractions at the moment, but I, can, I know that with hard work I can succeed. And here's how some children have been suggesting to their teacher that, they, that she feeds back to them about how hard they've worked, rather than on an outcome grade or a score. And for the very young children, some schools have chosen to use characters and stories to help make explicit the behaviours of gritty individuals which come out of the growth mindset. So here we've got Dean with a duck who never gives up. Okay. The impact of this has been wider than just education. So the Guernsey Island Athletics Club produced their 10-year plan recently, and one of their six key objectives is to ensure that the club is a growth-minded club. We've also had conversations with the media and local journalists, and this is a reflection of Matt Liu, one of our local sports reporters, who said... I now realise that the messages I send when reporting on sport have the potential to impact on the belief systems of young people, and I've altered the way I approach these stories. Also, in terms of recruitment, uh, here's an excerpt from a job description posted for a recent teaching post, uh, which includes to promote a love of learning, intellectual curiosity, and a growth mindset. And the beauty of all of this is there's nothing to stop any of our organisations wanting to adopt the principles of a growth mindset. And if you think about it, who would you want leading your island, educating your children, or even working alongside you? Someone in a fixed mindset with those associated behaviours, or someone in a growth mindset? I'm going to introduce you now to Isla. And Isla is Jeremy's three-and-a-half-year-old. What are you going to do? 
and we're going to see her growth-minded behaviours, which were definitely not visible a few weeks before this. She would throw her tennis racket down, have a right drop, give up um, when, when she missed the ball. So what are Jeremy, you going to do? Jeremy built into the game the words try again. So whether she hit the ball or not, she'd try again. And so here you can see her persistence, her determination, and when Jer Jeremy says, what are you going to do, she's actually saying try again. So when Isla's 10, what are you she's do? an excellent putter, the danger is that she gets labelled as being naturally talented okay, or, or gifted at putting. And this has the potential then to put her in a fixed mindset, so then she won't continue to improve. So what we've got to do is help her and others who reach mastery and competence understand the learning journey what that they've been on. What are you going to do? He's also been teaching her a little bit. He's been teaching her a bit about the brain and neurons and practice. So listen to this. I did it! How did you do it? Um, by practicing. By practicing? Yeah. And what happens when you practice? Get my neurons. And what does connecting your neurons help you do? Get better. Oh, well done. So what are you going to do now? Um, do some more. <laughs> Should I do it? Yeah, do it. And I've heard this story recently of a year 12 student who didn't answer one of her um, questions on an, a mock A-level exam. And when her teacher questioned her as to why, she said, oh, well, I thought I could have a go, but actually I was a bit worried about what the examiner would think if I got it wrong and looked stupid. And that's a ridiculous thing, but if you think back to those children and those puzzles and how those children in the fixed mindset didn't want to have a go for fear of failure, you can understand maybe why. Across the island, we need to ditch those attitudes. We need to be prepared to have a go and be brave, and also ditch the desire for those blue sweets. If we can all challenge our fixed mindset, we can develop generations of growth-minded individuals, people who believe that they can achieve and that those around them can also change and grow. So for us, we believe we can create a growth-minded Guernsey, a place that can be an example to the rest of the world and also be the greatest place to live on Earth. Thank you.